So as we talked about last time, last time we covered inequalities, specifically AMG inequalities and the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. And you might think that what uses all of these inequalities? They look super complicated. Well, in fact, these can really be used in IGCAC maths and IB maths, and even all throughout the like, Olympiad maths. So I think these are very useful theorems too. So to recap, last time we covered the AMGM inequality. Does anyone remember what AM stands for? Yeah, and then GM is. Does anyone also remember which one is always larger or equal? The, the direction of the inequality. It's a 50% chance. <laughs> Be brave. Yeah. Arithmetic. Yes, arithmetic is always larger. So if you have a, a data set x1 to xn, arithmetic mean is basically adding them all up, dividing it by n, and geometry mean was multiplying them all together and getting the nth root of it, and the arithmetic mean was always larger or equal than equal to this one here. And then the only condition in which the equal sign holds true would be It would only be equal if x1 and is all same to xn. And we did a proof of this one using something called mathematical induction, which was basically set a base case, assume that it holds true for a certain case, and then prove that it holds true for the next one. And then we apply this infinitely many times to a base case, and we get a proof for all infinite cases. That was basically the proof. And then the other one was cauchy schwarz inequality, which in short I wrote it as CSI. And we didn't cover this one really in depth, but this one will be probably very useful if you know how to use this one. So more specifically, does anyone remember what the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality was? Okay, it's fine. So if we have a n data sets a1 to an, and n data sets b1 to bn, then Then let's say that we square each one of these and add all of them together. We do the same thing for this. We square each one of these and add all of them up together. And then the other thing that we do is that we multiply a1 with b1, a2 with b2, all the way up to an with bn, and then we add them all up. So it will be like an b1 plus a2 b2 plus all the way up to a and b n. And then we square this whole thing instead of squaring the individual ones. Then this side right here will always be greater or equal to this side here. So before I go into the actual solving the actual questions, let's really quickly prove this one. And this looks very intimidating, but the proof for this is actually fairly simple. Much, 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 much more simple than the A and G inequality. So, what we do is that we have this data set, right? This is what we started off with. So, we're going to make it like this. I'll use colored pens for you guys to easily see how, what, what's happening. We multiply A1 to X, and then we add B1 here, okay? We do the same thing by a2x plus b2 and then we square this whole thing here. So x is basically just a variable. We're making a, we're making a quad, quad, quadratic function to prove this claim right here. And then we add it up all the way up to a n x plus b n and square this thing right here then this whole expression is adding the adding squares and squares are always non-negative they cannot be a negative number so after you add them up 
this must be greater or equal to zero. Correct? Does everyone follow until this point? And then what you're going to do is that you're going to expand this side here. Who can tell me what, what we'll get if we expand this one? Only this bracket. Does anyone? Okay, it'll be a1 squared x squared plus 2a1 b1 x plus b1 squared because this is just because a plus b squared would mean a squared plus b squared plus 2ab, right? So this one here is a and this one here is b. So if we expand this, it will become like this. And then we would also have this one here. which becomes this. And then what we would also have is all of these brackets expanded, and then finally, a n x plus b n also expanded. Hi, Daniel. In which we get this expression here. So we'll get this really, really long equation right here. But then what we're going to do next is that we're going to group them by the power of x's. So we're going to group this one here, this one here, and this one here. Then this would be I'll pull the two out of this bracket to make things a little bit more clear. Then finally, we would have b1 squared plus all the way up to bn squared. And then we got this thing right here, and then still this has to be greater or equal to zero, right? But to make things a little bit more simpler, I will, I will put a1 plus a1 squared all the way up to an squared plus as uh, what should I put this as? Big A and this one here as Big B. Oh. Then this here would become uh, and also A1, B1 plus all the way up to A and B and as big C, okay? Then what we get next is a big A x squared plus 2C x plus B is always greater or equal to zero. But the really important thing to note here is that if you have a quadratic that's always greater than zero, the, the, the what do you call this? Yeah, the discriminant will always be smaller than zero. Why? Because if we have a quadratic and that's always above the above x equals zero, which is like this one here, then there are always no roots, which means that the discriminant must be smaller than zero. So here we apply to we, we, we're going to find the discriminant, which is basically this thing squared minus this thing then a times b times four. And then but this has to be smaller or equal to zero. But you see that c here <coughs> is exactly what we have here, right? The big A is what we have over there the a1 squared all the way up to a n squared, and this big B is b1 squared sum to all the way up to b n squared. So from this, we can just divide four, we can just get rid of the four, because that's just a constant, and then we would get this thing here. And this is exactly the same to this claim that we started in the first place. So this is the end of the proof.
this looks really really long because of, because the because we have many expressions to deal with. But in essence, what we just did is that we expanded the brackets of a quadratic, and then we just used the dis discriminant, and then that just immediately gave us the cauchy schwarz inequality. So that's it for the proof. Are there any questions? I think that table has a few questions. <laughs> ah, okay. Is everything clear in the proof? Okay. Or during the question solving time, you can just call me and ask me to go over some bits that you didn't understand if there are any parts that you are not clear with. So this is how we get the proof, and then we're going to solve actual questions. We want to do more of problem solving today rather than listening to lectures. Okay. I prepared like five to six questions. The first, the first couple of ones are just purely about these inequalities. These are going to be relatively more straightforward, while they're going to be harder as it goes to the goes to question five and question number six. And question six will be about geometry. I told you last time that these inequalities actually can be applied in geometry as well. So question four, five, six are going to be applying those back into geometry. And then if, you're, if you solve any of these questions, just call me and I'll check the answers and then let's have some presentations. And if you're thinking of taking Olympiads at UKMT or AMC, the cauchy schwarz inequality is something that's going to be used really, really often. So that's going to be a very useful theorem for you guys to use. And can I erase this board? Is it fine? For, no? Leave it? Okay. Or you can take photos. No?
So basically, the order that you want to solve these problems is one, two, three, four. And then if you're done, so here, there's the super challenging problem over there. So you can try that as well. So finding the mass of x plus y plus z. So we have x, y, z, which is basically three variables. So let's write the, so we have to use one of these, but by looking at the, uh, looking at the product that we want to get, it doesn't really seem like we have to use the AMGM inequality. So we'll go with the cauchy schwarz inequality and see what happens. So because we have three variables, we want to probably use cauchy schwarz for n equals three, where we have three variables. So we first write that down. So this is the inequality that you want to use. Then here, what we want to do is that we're going to use x, x squared, y squared, z squared for a1, a2, a3. So, but the trick here is that these can be any numbers. So instead of using a variable, we use one plus one plus one. Because the reason why we do this is if a1 squared equals x squared, a1 equals x. If b1 squared equals 1, b1 just equals 1. So that means that a1, b1 will mean x times 1, which is basically x. So here, a1 squared equals x, which means a1 is x. b1 squared equals 1, which means b1 is 1. And therefore, x squared, y squared plus z squared times 1 plus 1 plus 1 is always greater or equal to x plus y plus z squared. Did anyone get, did everyone get this part? So, but because we know what x squared, y squared, z squared, and some of those three are, and we also know this is just 3, so 3 times 54 is 168, and then the Maximum of x plus y plus z, x plus y plus z has to be smaller than root 168. So that's the solution for the first question. Then, uh, how much time do we have left? Ah, I think we have enough time. Okay, so I'll give you time to solve the second, third, and fourth one. So, yeah. So what you do in order to solve this question is, Oh, you are actually missing a uh, square here. So what you do to solve this question here is that you have a and root a. So you want so what you can infer from these is that probably this one is a one and this uh, this one is a one squared and this one is just a one. And then there are some constants in front of each of these a one, a two, a threes, which means that these are probably what is going to be the b one, b two, and b threes. So this is the correct solution to just explain it. What you do is you, you put a plus b plus c and then 9 plus 4 times 16. And a equals a1 squared and 9 equals b1 squared, which means that a1 equals root a and b1 equals 3. So this expression here is going to be always greater or equal to 3 root a plus Two root b plus four root c squared, and then because the problem gave us what a plus b plus c is, we know this value here. This is also just a number, so you multiply them together, and then we get the square root of that. Solve this entirely geomet geometrically by using the cosine theorem or whatnot, but that would be much tedious than this method here. So, again. We use the principles that we learned last time. First of all, we have we want to get x squared plus y squared plus c squared, but we don't have an expression for x with something that has x, y, and z. So we're going to make that first. And we're going to make that by splitting this triangle up into a form that we can represent the area as 
x times a number, y times a number plus c times a number. So first thing that we do is that we draw lines from this center point here to each of the each of the points a, b, and c. And what you can see here is that each of these are triangles with x as the height and 5 as the base. In this case, y is the height, 3 is the base. And this triangle here, z is the uh, height and 4 is the base. So for this triangle here, x times 5, which is height times base, or 2 plus height times base over 2, for this triangle here with y, and for this triangle here, 4 times c over 2 would equal the area of this triangle because each of these triangles are just small parts of the entire triangle. And the entire triangle's area is just 3 times 4 over 2. So now we have an expression that, that is about 5x plus 3y plus 4z equals 12. So we know, so we have an expression that only involves the x and y and z to the power of 1. I want to get the power of 2 of x and y and z. So we would immediately use the cauchy schwarz inequality in order to get this outcome here. Are there any questions? But an alternative way of doing this is, uh, it's same until, it's, I did the same thing until this part, but a bit more easier way of solving this would be, in the previous examples, we, all, we always use just constants as b1, b2, b3, but you can also use something that involves x, y, z as well. So what you do is that this one is a1 squared plus b1, uh, a2 squared plus a3 squared. So b1 squared, b2 squared plus b3 squared, we use this instead. And then note that this is directly inside the question, so it's much easier for us to compute this because we know what this means, this value is. And if this is a1 squared and this is b1 squared, a1, b1 would be just five. If a2 squared is six y and b1 squared is six over y, then a1, a2, b2 would just be six and the last one would be seven. And then we square this thing. And we know that this is 12 root six and this is 324. So by dividing this with 12 root 6, we can just immediately get the minimum value of this. But then this, to solve the bonus question, in the cauchy schwarz inequality, I haven't wrote that down in this part here, but the equality holds true when a n over b1 equals a2 over b2 all the way up to a n over b n. And the proof is really, really simple. You can just directly plug this inside here and then you'll see that it actually works. So back here, if we're trying to get the minimum of this, it means that we're trying to find the conditions at which the equality holds true. So that means we can use that directly for this, which would give us 5x over 5x over 5, 5 over x would equal 6y over 6y and 7 over 7z and then this just gives us x equals y equals z and if the perpendicular lines from a point to each of these sides if the length of all of those three, three lines are the same it means that p should be the in center which we learned about in last week so for the bonus question, the point P such that this becomes a minimum is the in center of this triangle. And the minimum, we can calculate that by just, uh, by making our A1, A2, A3, and B1, B2, B3 such that this one here is directly involved in the inequality. So 